Our oceans are the most biodiverse places on our planet, bursting with life and natural resources that could not be remotely compared to what we have on land. It truly looks and feels like another world. This extreme diversity is what allows our oceans to provide the entire Earth with what it needs to keep life, such as the oxygen made from phytoplankton, which are responsible for creating more than half of the world's oxygen, which is more than any amount of trees has ever produced. And while most organisms cannot drink from the ocean, nearly every living thing on the Earth benefits from its food chain. This includes humans, as we've been fishing in our oceans for centuries for resources. Sadly, our oceans are still suffering from major impacts caused by the human population here on Earth. What are some current issues you can think of regarding our oceans that have been caused by humans? There's way too much, way too much pollution. Uh, I have heard some stuff about the reefs in Australia and those getting hurt. And I'm sure overfishing is an issue. Plastic. Yeah, we keep throwing plastic in there because we don't want to take 30 seconds out of our lives to throw it into a trash can and then there's also like plastic fishing nets those are a big problem just a lot of plastic <laughs> uh coral bleaching but i forget how that happens definitely the plastics that are just being thrown into the oceans and just the way that they're degrading and making it very harmful to different fish uh global warming also is a thing <laughs> okay. oh yeah oil spills Oil spills are definitely a problem with the uh, oceans and stuff. You know how scientists like have said that we are overdue for like a mass extinction event? We're not overdue. We're right on time, actually. And it's caused by us. I think that pollution is definitely a huge part of that. Um, overfishing, another huge part of that. Um, we've really done a number on not a only marine ecosystems, but also really just all ecosystems. I mean, there's been so many animals that, you know, we have played a direct part in causing to go extinct and many more that we will never know about because of ourselves, really. Uh, uh, pollution. Uh, I forget what it's called, but the ocean becoming acidic. Uh, general global warming, rising temperatures. What's unfortunate is that humans have been prepositioned to take more than what we need. Overfishing, in particular, has played a large impact on our oceans in the past, from wiping out entire species to destroying ecosystems. And while the worst has ceased, it's still happening around us, even to this day. At the time that this documentary is being made, the global pandemic involving the coronavirus is still affecting the daily lives of people everywhere. And like how the pandemic has impacted us all, COVID-19 has also affected the impacts of overfishing as well, and the efforts of scientists aiming to find solutions for some current problems regarding fisheries and the regulations. I don't know. That's my answer. I, I don't know. I know that it probably hindered it a little bit. Encouragement to stay inside and work at home can't go swimming in the ocean at home and see things <laughs> uh, the at home ocean is not yet a invention that we have made i don't really know anything about specifics for marine research but i do know how uh pe how some people don't have access to the labs anymore so they can't do as uh it thorough research from home uh well it's definitely slowed that type of research down because i think and it's really slowed everything down um, aside from, you know, coronavirus research, because, you know, like the world's priorities changed with coronavirus to, you know, solving and combating coronavirus. And uh, so I think it definitely slowed that down um, that it also kind of helped, though, like, because now I think about it, actually. Uh, and so I don't know that it necessarily sped things up as far as that, because, of course, like I said, um, or slowed things down because 
like I said, you know, the world shifted priorities for a moment there to uh, focus on coronavirus. Uh, uh, I would assume it would have slowed it down a whole lot because it's very hard to social distance if you're trying to do any field work. I would assume you have to live in pretty close quarters a lot of time in any sort of research expedition. I, I would generally assume it's slowed things down, just like everything else. I had asked some professionals about how COVID-19 has affected the marine research. Reg Watson, who is a retired marine scientist, had said, Most colleagues already used video conferencing to meet, but now it is the basis for most exchanges of ideas. It has impacted travel, logistics, funding, and therefore research in general, especially work on the ocean. He elaborates this topic more, much more thoroughly throughout the rest of the text. Jason S. Link, who was a senior scientist in the NOAA, had said in an article, The situation in 2020, and perhaps well into 2021, is that it will be the years with severely limited data collection. In fact, we have already had to cancel most of our major cruises and surveys in 2020. The main reason for the cancellations are simply due to things like COVID regulations. Since people are encouraged to meet up, it's hard for marine biologists and scientists to complete any sort of research in labs or on boats and teams, as typically would be done. When asking some students about what they consider to be some marine issues that are caused by humans, I asked what issue they talked about is currently the worst issue in their opinion. You think? I would probably say pollution. They're both terrible. How am I supposed to choose one? Yeah, I don't know. They're both terrible. More than likely, it's the plastics that are the worst part of it because of just the fact that whenever other fish eat other fish, they're still consuming the plastics even if they have never come into contact with it. It's just plastic is bad. Um. I mean, I only really mentioned one. I mean, I guess there is a lot more, but um, um, just like unseen impacts of other, uh, or like unforeseen impacts of uh, our other activities like fishing. And Probably uh, ocean acidification. That would, that would be my guess. Topics that were covered mostly involved things like pollution or waste created from human activities and destruction of coral reefs. However, I also asked anyone that didn't mention overfishing if they thought overfishing is still a current issue in today's world. I don't know much about it. Um, I think it depends on where in the world you are because certain species and certain fish are going to be fished more. And because of my lack of knowledge, I just, as compared to something else, I'm not sure, but I'm going to say fairly significant. I don't think it is. It might be though. It definitely is because there are different uh, species going extinct that I like. I don't hear of them as it's not mainstream news, but every time I hear about oceans and the problems, I always hear how overfishing is definitely a problem in extinction. Yes. That, okay. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that just didn't come to mind. <laughs> there isn't naturally meant to be that much fishing in the ocean. Uh, it's sustainable on a smaller scale, but once you scale up to an industrial level, it starts to have an impact. It's notable that some didn't even mention the topic of overfishing, and that many admitted that they didn't know much about the topic of overfishing in the first place. In short, the public often is not aware of issues like overfishing, or even certain aspects of how our oceans are being impacted by our actions. When asking Watson about the awareness of current overfishing, he replied with, Overfishing is not the focus of much global attention at present. Poor countries have limited options, profits of large companies, and the need for more protein to feed expanding populations, or foreign exchange through exports or allowed access, means that the government may even support overfishing. He elaborates on Western countries as well in his comments, but overall he emphasizes that overfishing does not get much attention. Jason S. Link says, I have no data to back this up, but anecdotally, I think the general populace is largely unaware of the issue. Perhaps populations along some coasts might be, especially with fishing communities, but my relatives who live in your part of the country don't tend to think or talk about this. Largely, I suspect it's because it's out of sight and out of mind. A very current and relevant example are jellyfish. 
Jellyfish are heavily overpopulated right now due to ocean acidification, which is basically what it sounds like, and the multitude of jellyfish are a byproduct since they benefit from it while their predators suffer. Guess who's responsible? Much like overfishing, we have caused this issue and the public are generally unaware of how it occurs, which only makes the issue worse. So, masses of jellyfish wash up on beaches like this one. The ones seen here are relatively harmless to humans, but plenty of jellyfish are and can be a threat to humans and other animals due to their ability to sting. And several fishing industries have taken their tolls from too many of these guys getting caught in nets and having laid their eggs on things like shipping containers, which carries their populations further out. Those jellyfish can also become invasive species because of, uh, combined with shipping and like becoming an invasive species through shipping and overfishing in Japan, in jellyfish has grown to a huge population that is absolutely just destroyed. Not only just the ecosystems, but their entire fishing industry is now suffering because of it too. Because those, the fish and whatnot that they were overfishing before are now on top of being overfished, they're also being eaten by the jellyfish. Another subtopic worth mentioning is the fact that plenty of the public greatly care about the health of our planet, yet do not have much incentive to do so since they don't have much knowledge of wildlife in the first place, especially regarding marine life and species that need more conservation efforts than others. The most threatened species are not the species that get the most media coverage. The most commonly mentioned species or genus groupings of sharks were hammerhead sharks, white sharks, whale sharks, etc. From David F. Schiffman. What endangered marine species do you guys know about? Uh, <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> um, what's the, like a spearfish or something? Like, I've heard of that one. Like a swordfish? Yeah, swordfish, that's what it is. Isn't that one endangered or something? <laughs> I've got no clue. I don't really know any. That's okay. I may, I may, like, know some, but I don't really know don't if they're know. endangered or not. I can't think of any at the moment. You know, like the blue whale, the orca. I think pretty much all the whales really are kind of endangered right now. Um, pilot whales, like narwhals, like they're all endangered, endangered species. Um, lots of like tropical fish and like corals and stuff. I don't remember like exact species. Well, those are on that side of things. But um, there's a lot of especially like tropical uh, animals that are in danger because the coral reefs that they lived in are dying off. Whales, uh, coral, uh, loads of anything that I probably wouldn't know the name of, but I'm sure there is a whole lot. Most of them had struggled to first come up with an answer, if any. So why? Why the lack of awareness for things like overfishing? One word, media. Social media, the internet, whatever term you prefer to use, online sources of information is often the culprit to unawareness and closed-mindedness when it comes to several topics, not just ones regarding marine issues. How much does media influence your opinion? Well, I don't see much specifics about this because it's not really a hit topic in the media or anything, and I haven't gone out to research it on my own. How does social media just affect my opinion in general? Well, social media kind of decides what I hear about and see in my daily life. And I mean, if I see something that interests me, I'll do a bunch of more research on it, make sure I'm getting all the facts. But it's not always shown up in media. Like, they kind of get to choose what we see. Um, well, considering I get most of my news from social media, it influences it a lot. But I try to, if I'm trying to actually figure something out, I always try to, like, not be influenced by dumb dumb social media well then yeah i am influenced by the places i read things because confirmation bias is cool the media definitely does influence my opinion a lot because of the fact that i'm constantly being bombarded with um just news and different information about certain like just whatever whatever's on the internet will be shown to you at some point it feels uh, I definitely think that the internet has raised my awareness and it has raised awareness of a lot of people, uh, especially minors, um, who are very concerned about it. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't have activists like Greta Thunberg. Um, so I think that social media has definitely played a massive part in um, my awareness and the awareness of others. Um, 
in like for just climate change in general and like uh you know the destruction of ecosystems it's something that i am legitimately concerned about and probably wouldn't be as concerned about had it not been for you know reddit you know instagram like all those like social media platforms youtube like all those social media platforms like i'll get in my recommended once in a while ecosystems being destroyed uh new species on the brink of extinction or whatever and um you know it's it's scary i think that it has for a lot of other people and i think that's a very good thing in general uh yeah a good bit if i do research into something i make sure i do research in depth there's a whole lot of opinion to change in <laughs> terms of like overfishing exists uh correct uh yeah <laughs> Repeatedly hearing about a problem through one frame presenting one particular solution causes people to assume that this is the only way to understand the problem and is the only solution. When new ways of understanding or solving the problem are presented, they can be dismissed as incongruous without being considered. From David S. Schiffman. It is worth noting that little data does contribute to the overall unawareness of issues like overfishing. The logic being that if there is not enough data, there's not going to be enough information to present to the public. Scientists have raised concerns that limit-based tools may not only be ineffective in protecting sharks, but may even undermine existing target-based efforts that have been shown to be successful in conserving and recovering shark species. From David S. Schiffman. However, there are plenty of examples where substantial data is not necessary for citizens to be aware of marine overfishing, and for those same citizens to even support efforts to help stop it. In Peru, for example, semi-structured interviews with 88 Peruvian gillnetters revealed that fishers are cognizant of their impacts on the hammerhead population, and further, 76% of the respondents were in favor of the ban. From Julia G. Mason. So, what can we do about it? COVID-19 may be an obstacle, but it definitely can't completely stop us from helping our planet. If anything, COVID may actually prove an advantage for the marine ecosystem and its recovery. Well, I know a lot of scientific institutes have taken their funding and rerouted it to virus funding and things like that. So there's probably a funding deficit on these. Although, I'm sure there's a lot less traffic. I'm thinking there's gonna be a lot less traffic on the ocean and stuff like that. So the wildlife might be thriving a bit more, allowing you to do some better research actually. Many fisheries and marine science organizations are working to determine how to meet their missions in the midst of the COVID-19 outbreak. As such, it seems prudent to exchange ideas, share knowledge, and initiate a discussion among us. From Jason S. Link. There's still plenty of things we can do to improve our fisheries as well, such as supporting better regulations that allow those environments to thrive while still producing enough for the public. We propose a default for many U.S. fisheries that would maintain catches at or around the previously set level, unless otherwise indicated. If conditions arise that warrant it, managers could, at their discretion, adopt increased uncertainty buffers, setting annual catch limits, potential biological removals, etc. From Jason S. Link. Our ocean is the only one we have, so let's try our best to keep it safe. And it starts with knowing.